Alexandria, Virginia. The game is one pocket. This is my pocket. I'm going to play the eight ball, the black ball, back into this corner pocket. Handsome Danny from Columbus, so I'm going to play ball in this corner pocket. I'm saying, eight, 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 Now, friends, let me tell you what I mean. You got one, two, three, four, five, six. Pockets to take. Pockets mark the difference between a pool player. From Gallo B, I'm not a B, I pool. Well, that's right, I'm Jimmy Subject is, in fact, pool on today's ABC's wide world of sports. Specifically, the World All-Around Pocket Billiards Championship from Johnson City, Illinois. They usually like the Oscar Spanning the globe to bring you the constant variety of sports. The thrill of victory. Agony of defeat. This is ABC's Wide World of Sports. Brought to you by Allstate Insurance Company. You're in good hands with Allstate. By your Mercury Dealer, home of the 1960 And by Maxima Medicaid Shave Cream. The Potion Shave. The more you need, Maxima. It's just after sunset in Johnson City, Illinois. Today we have our annual visit to one of the more colorful corners of the wide world of sport, to the Jansko Brothers Bar here in Johnson City. You know, this used to be a pretty tough part of America. As a matter of fact, there's a local legend that says that the first bomb ever dropped from an airplane was dro dropped in this area, a little Egypt, they used to call it, during a gang war. Well, times have changed, and the big annual event here now is the World All-Around Pocket Billiards Championship. Quite frankly, it's better known as the Hustlers Tournament because the pool hustlers of America come here, well, this year from 31 states, 101 of them in all came almost a month ago. You've had a glimpse of some of them, people like Handsome Danny and Weenie Beanie and Omaha Fat. Haven't seen Superstitious Aloysius so far this year, but I'm sure he's around someplace. They all come and they play against each other in three different games. One pocket, nine ball, and straight pool. They all play until only two are left. Those two are going to play it off tonight for the championship of the Hustlers World. Let's go in and meet them. Also on today's Wide World of Sports, by the way, you'll be seeing the Cresta run from Samaritz, Switzerland, men at speeds of more than 90 miles an hour in little skeleton sleds, and the World Barrel Jumping Championship from Grossinger, New York. But right now, here are the men. This is Boston Shorty. Larry Johnson is his real name. He was a finalist here two years ago and lost to the late Harold Wurst. On the left now, carefully arranging the chair, is Luther Wimpy Lassiter of Elizabeth City, North Carolina. He's won this one before. He's won just about everything there is in the world of pool. They call him Wimpy because in a casual game, which often lasts for hours and hours, he eats a lot of hamburgers. Now, they're playing a game called One Pocket and have already played four games. Wimpy has won three. Boston Shorty has won one. Whoever wins four games of One Pocket first wins that phase of the competition. You have to win two of the three phases. Now, Wimpy is going to break. Oop, look. Oh, he scratched in the left pocket. He's right. trying to push those one, balls Mr. over Lyser. toward the right side of the table, obviously intending to choose the right-hand pocket as his pocket. Uh, the way this game works is very simple. Shorty must now decide whether he wants to play for the right-hand pocket at the right end of the table there or the left-hand pocket, you see. Only one of those two pockets can he choose, and then he must then put every ball that he makes in that pocket. He's chosen the left pocket. Whoever makes eight points first wins the game. Remember, Shorty is down three games to one. He now leads one to minus one because Lassiter scratched on that first shot. He doesn't have a shot now. It looks like he's just going to try to knock that one away from Lassiter, but it didn't work out too well. He's trying to get that away from the pocket so Wimpy wouldn't have a good shot, but Wimpy does not have too difficult a one. Trailing by one to minus one in this game. One foot on the floor at all times. That is a rule.
delicately done, the ball brought into perfect position by going off two cushions to make now that stripe ball, the 10. He's now even, zero again. He has worked off the scratch, in other words, and trails one point to nothing. Now, he can come off the right side of that 10 ball, I think, and break up the cluster at the same time as making it. See that? Good shot. He is in fine position now to extend the run. He has tied it up at one to one. This is the six ball, green if you're watching in color. And he takes the lead. And again, look at the position this man plays. Removing a tiny piece of lint probably wouldn't change the course of the ball, but it's a distraction. Very much like a golfer picking little bits of debris from the lineup of putt. That's the 12 ball he has the shot on. Watch the position again. Drawing back. You have a fairly tough shot even with that beautiful draw. Shorty can do nothing but admire the skill of his opponent right now and hope for the best. He's going to play that eight along the rail, you see. He's got to cut it pretty thin. Four to one now. And again, he's got a good shot. He could run this right out. Look at the short fingers on Boston Shorty. His fingers, hands, and arms are all extremely short, which makes this game more difficult for him. We'll try to explain that as we go along. Lassiter now chalking up to go for the one ball. to one, three more, Nine and he'll win three. this phase. They'll go on to straight pool after this, and that's Wimpy's strongest game. He could run this out with just playing two of the phases. After straight pool, they'll play nine ball, but only if necessary. And that was the nine, nine ball. Two. And he made six to one. He only needs two more, and he's got a pretty good shot on the two ball now. He wants to make sure he doesn't scratch in that left-hand pocket. He plays the two ball into the right-hand corner. Oh, he had to put a little English on it. Oh, if you've ever played pool, you've heard that sound before. That was a miscue, and Lassiter scratched into the right-hand pocket just as he was on the verge of victory in this game. A big break for Shorty. And that brings him down to five to one. That costs him a point. It's now five to one. Lassiter here leading, but Shorty at the table. Luther's going to file off the edge of that, try to make it a little rougher so that miscuing will not be so easy the next time. Shorty must play the left pocket, and he's got a tough shot along the rail there. But he knows how to play that one. So he brings it up to five to two now. He can make three more balls. He can tie it up. Shooting left-handed, and here you see his short arms do not allow him to reach that ball right-handed. He doesn't like to use a bridge, although he's he has to use it a lot, but he uses it as little as possible. He'd rather shoot left-handed, he says, than use the bridge. Again left-handed. Now it's five to four. But where's the shot for that left-hand pocket? I don't think he has anything. He's going to play safe. Uh, as long as the ball Thank hits the cushion there, Mr. he is great safe. That is not a scratch. He Mr. trails Lassiter five to five four. Ball. It'll be Lassiter's shot, and we'll Mr. be Johnson back in a minute at Johnson City. Man, nothing takes it off like Noxima medicated shave. <laughs> Take it off. Take it all off. Nothing takes it off life. Noxima medicated shade. How closer you This 
is Jim McKay, back again in Johnson City, Illinois, where a little battle of safety shots has been going on while we were away. Luther Lassiter leads in this game of one pocket pool by five points to four, and it looks like he's going to play another safety. His pocket is the pocket, pocket right under his cue right now. He's got no shot for that. So he's just going to try to move that ball back up towards that pocket that he's after so that later on it may be of some use to him. Now Shorty, remember, is playing for the left-hand pocket at the other end of the table, trailing by five to four in this game, trailing by three games to one against Lassiter. If Lassiter wins this game, he'll have won the one pocket phase of the competition. Trying for the 12 ball, and of course it has to be in the left-hand pocket. Oh, he missed it. He missed it. Shorty in real trouble now. On left, Looser doesn't have a shot. Let's take a look and see. Very, very finely cut shot he's going to attempt on the 12 ball. And he's got it. Luther Lassiter going ahead by six to four in this game. But what's he gonna do now? Looks like this man who plays perfect position almost always was not able to do it that time. Took a quick look at a possible bank shot and has decided now just to try to move this 15 ball back up towards his pocket, or has he? Yeah. is moving it perfectly back up towards his pocket and leaving Shorty just about nothing. That ball along the left cushion there is of no use to him. He'd scratch into the side pocket if he tried that, and I think it's actually jammed against the corner of the pocket. But I, it looks like maybe he's going to try to bank that ball up against the, uh, the cushion. And he missed it. Mr. Johnson. It goes, however, as a good safe shot. He figured that if he made it, okay. If he didn't, it would be a good safety. And now Luther is going to try to bank the one ball. Remember, he leads six to four now. He only needs two. These fellows will seldom play a bank shot. They don't like to. Ooh, he could have hit that cue ball, you see, but he made it. Seven to four. One more point, and it's all over in the one pocket. Seven, Mr. Lasseter. Now here's that 15 one. ball that he moved up just a couple of shots ago, remember? But it's still not in too good position. If he's going to play that, he's going to have to have a double bank shot. Here it comes. It's all over. Ricky Lasseter has won the one pocket phase of this competition from Boston Shorty by four games to one. It was best out of seven, remember. And next, they'll be moving to straight pool after a short intermission here. Right now, we're going to move on to an event seen earlier on ABC's Wide World of Sports, the World Barrel Jumping Championships at Grossinger, New York. Our reporter on the scene, Bill Fleming. Today, our ABC color television units are covering the 17th annual World Barrel Jumping Championships. The setting is the famous Grossinger Country Club, located some 100 miles from New York City, and this is the famous ice rink there where these championships are held. Now, you and I might have some trouble just standing up on ice skates, but these fellows today are going to be plummeting through the air at tremendous speeds, and they will attempt to break the world's record, which is 17 barrels, 28 feet, 8 inches. A good crowd on hand in a weekend holiday mood. And the weather, well, it's just about perfect. It's the beginning of a brisk winter season in the beautiful Catskill Mountains of New York State. A fine winter setting, some top competition, and the exciting final rounds coming up in just a moment. Mercury's got it. touch. This new Mercury Brome's got it. The pure classic look, the elegance, the fine car touch, inspired by...
three of the greatest cue men of all times, the tops and table toppers. First, Willie Moscone, the world's pocket billiards champ. Jimmy Karras, three-time winner of the pocket billiards crown. Here, the world's outstanding trick shot artist, Charlie Peterson. And now, a two-directional shot by Moscone. Using a mighty masse, he'll pocket three object balls. Two balls into the upper right pocket, and one ball into the side pocket. Nice. Moscone will now try to masse his cue ball in a wide semicircle and sink the object ball into the upper left corner pocket without hitting any other ball or any rail until the shot has been completed. Mm -hmm. That's doing it. For stoutish players who want to reduce, Jimmy Karras adds a little road work. He's got to run around the table and get back in time to make the shot. Hurry, hurry, hurry. Yow, he done done it. Whew. Maybe he should wear track shoes. Here's another fancy shot by Jimmy. He'll put three object balls into three pockets the hard way. And now, kids, get this. Nice trick if he can do it. And he can. Here in slow motion, the clever Karras pockets six balls in one shot. That's one down, and now another one down. Now the cue ball hits three cushions and makes a beautiful combination like this. Here go the third and fourth object balls. And now the fifth and sixth balls are pocketed. With the cue ball still on the table. No, that isn't an oversized billiard ball. It's Peterson's paint. Here, Curly will drive his cue ball into the object ball directly in front of it. This will drift his cue ball over to here. Meantime, the white object ball will have traveled up to the cushion. Now it will come back, and its impact upon the cue ball here will send the cue ball on this route and score on the other object ball, here. Get it? No? Well, watch. And here comes the score. So well. To hit a cigarette target with a cue ball after bouncing off nine cushions, yep, that's what I said, nine cushions. Well, that calls for super skill and plenty of power. Let's count the cushions. One, two, three, four. Five, six, seven. Two more cushions to go. Will he make it? Eight, nine, and a hit. With 14 balls in its path, is it possible to put the stripe ball into this side pocket? Well, let's watch it in slow motion. did it? Moscone, the mighty Natch. See the black ball? Jimmy will make that eight ball, leap through the triangular pool rack, vault over that line of four balls, and bury itself in the upper right corner pocket. Oh, Mr. Karras, do you really think you can make it? The man says he can. And here it is in slow motion. Watch the black ball and keep your eyes on it. That old eight ball has a long way to go. Maybe it'll make that upper right corner pocket and maybe it won't. What am I saying? Of course the black ball will make that upper right corner pocket. It's going, it's going. Ah, uh, it's gone. Thank you, James. And now a bit of cue wizardry by the master himself, Moscone the Magnificent. He'll knock the prop from under the stripe ball, hit three cushions, and sink the stripe ball into the left corner pocket. So, one, two, three, object ball. No scratch. Now watch the stripe ball. In, bar rather. Jimmy the Karras claims he created this neat number for nimble nonagenarians, whatever they are. The idea of this super gigantic goes like this. To wit, 
and viz, the white cue ball will shoot through that paper target, scoot up the table and hit those two balls, which in turn will hit those two balls, sending all four object balls into two pockets. And leaving the cue ball on the table. Trick shot cue men shout with glee when they bounce a single coin into a single glass. So, Peterson decides to make the trick twice as difficult. Okay, Charles, don't let me down, fella. Alle, hop! And nicely done, Curly. Here's a dream shot for the book. Using two cue balls, Moscone, with one shot, will pocket all of the five striped balls. Watch carefully. One down, two down. The re. Now the white ball must sink the ball at the pocket and get out of the way of the ball behind it. There. Magnifico. Here there are 17 balls on the table, including the cue ball. Willie will pocket all of them with one shot by driving the center balls in all directions. At least, that's what he hopes to do. Well, let's see. Here we go, in slow motion. There goes the 13th ball, the 14th and 15th, the 16th, and the 17th. A clean sweep. Here's a problem for all you cue artists. Between the white cue ball and that striped object ball, there are seven. How can he sink that stripe ball into the foreground pocket without having the cue ball touch any of the seven object balls? Hmm? Here's how. Look out. Why, Jimmy, you're a slicker. Goodbye now. <laughs> Anything about pocket billiards or not, here are two guys whose amazing skill, I really believe, will open your optics. At the right is Willie Moscone, champion pocket billiard player of the world. At the left is former champ, Jimmy Karras. Yep, a couple of capable kids, even if a little on the hammy side when in front of a camera. And now, making one shot apiece, Willie and Jimmy will pocket six balls each. Look! Not you guys, keep your eyes on the ball. They make their shots in split-second succession. Goodness, what a string of sibilants. There, those cue balls, of course, must remain on the table, and that they do. And now, another neatly coordinated doubles trick by Moscone, the incomparable. Here, here. And Karras, the cue man extraordinary. There, there. Each player will pocket shots with a rolling cue ball. You'll note the cue ball is moving all the time. See? Nice going, guys. In this little number, each player will hit his cue ball at the same time. Here the balls will collide, as it were, and then each little player will carefully avoid the other as it travels around the table and hits four cushions, mind you, and finally sinks an object ball. Can the boys do it? Well, don't bet on it, folks, but they can try. And now, through slow motion, you can follow the course of the balls as they each bound off three of the four cushions. 
Here we come into the home stretch with each white ball heading for its fourth cushion and then touching an object ball to drop same into a pocket. Yes? Well, could be. One. Two. That's it. Coming up next, my friends, we present another twosome shot in normal speed that should test your big brown eyes. Willie and Jimmy will make simultaneous shots, each pocketing an object ball. But how do they do it? Well, watch carefully. No, one cue ball didn't pass through the other cue ball. Jimmy had to jump his cue ball over Willie's cue ball, thus. Yow, that's coordination, precision, perfection. And speaking of all that their perfection stuff, here's one to tax even their terrific accuracy. First, they'll shoot their cue balls between those cigarettes which leave no room for a missed cue, be it ever so infinitesimal. Infinitesimal? Smith, how you talk. Anyway, the cue balls will then travel all over the place and pocket two object balls. Go! Well, it's a long haul. Will they make it? One, two, so well. In this little creation, Moscone the Mighty will try his skill on a moving object ball, pocketing same without touching any of the balls which form yonder lane. Neat stuff, William. Practicing this shot on a dull, rainy afternoon should furnish some excitement for anybody. You simply smack your cue ball against the object ball resting on your pal's mouth. Yes, folks, you too can do this trick if you don't run out of pals. Some fun. Folks, have you ever seen a pocket billiard shot made on two tables, six feet apart? Well, here we have Mr. Pocket Billiards himself about to try a two-table shot. And what a shot! Take your hand out of the scene, Willie. Thanks, Willie. That was Willie. Anyway, Willie will drive his cue ball like a bullet down the length of the table and sock the lower ball, which will project the upper ball, sending it across six feet of space between tables and down the full length of this table to the far rail. And now, the ball comes back, all the way back, to the object ball, and pockets it. We sincerely hope. Okay, let's go. Imagine controlling the flight of that ball so it hits within a hair's breadth the exact spot on that rail to bring it back for a direct hit on the object ball and still keep the white ball on the table. Brother, that's one for the book. That same shot in normal camera speed. And remember, folks, from the time the cue ball is hit until the feed is completed, you see the entire shot in one scene. See what I mean? No trick film cutting in this picture. These shots were actually made. While Moscone gets set for his next two table shot, we'll mark the course of Jimmy's cue ball here in a tricky quickie. Clever kid, Karis. In the next shot, we use a book of paper matches. This complicated creation, we hope, will prove another two-table sensation by Moscone, the Magnif. Willie will drive the cue ball down to the matchbook, from whence it will take off and leap nimbly over to the second table and hit two object balls. These two object balls will in turn hit those two object balls, causing all four object balls to go into the pockets. Yep, that's the idea. Okay, again, all in one scene and in slow motion. What, a miss? Yow, there it is. Four balls in two pockets on two tables. Top that one. Well, Moscone will try to top it later. Meantime, watch it again from another angle at normal speed. Mm -hmm. Is that a shahuta? 
mr moscone aided and ably abetted by his director